So we want to get your hands on really cool mounts in the game with as little time as possible. Well, I'm here to help you, so stick around. Just a side note, whatever coordinates that you may need for all the 10 mounts, you will find them listed in the description below. Starting off with Rat Stallion. You can get this awesome looking mount as a reward from the achievement Underbelly Tycoon, which requires you to collect 20,000 sightless eyes from Legion Dalaran's Underbelly. It might seem like a huge number, but you can do it in just a few hours if you're willing to. Acquiring this currency depends on whether PvP is enabled or not in that area. You will always have one of two debuffs active at once, which are no guards, indicating PvP is on, and sewer guards, which indicates PvP is off. If it's on, that means you can kill players, which in return gives you 15 to 50 eyes. You can also loot chests that spawn every now and then. The amount of eyes you get from them really depends on their size. Small chests give 10, medium chests give 40, and the large one gives 100 eyes. This used to be pretty competitive, but since it's an older expansion, you will barely find any players there. If you're not into PvP at all, you can speak to Wraithen who is standing at the entrance under a tent, and pay him 50 sightless eyes to turn all PvP off. Back on duty, baby. This will stop chests from appearing, but instead mini bosses will begin spawning. Killing and looting them will give you anywhere between 50 to 90 eyes. Another way to get them is through fishing. If you go to the black market area, you'll find shimmering whirlpools. Fishing in them will give you some eyes. It's not the ideal way to farm them, but you could do that while waiting for the bosses or the chests to spawn, since these pools are always there, regardless of whether guards are on duty or not. You could also do pet battles. Winning a battle against a blind rat, which is found all around the underbelly, will grant you 75 eyes. One thing worth mentioning, you can spend your sightless eyes. It won't affect your achievement progress. In fact, you cannot stack eyes more than 5000, which is the cap. So spend your currency, and of course there are a few items that will actually speed up your grind. You can buy from Wraithen the Creative Rat Stallion Harness for 950 eyes. Using it will spawn a box next to the tent. If you click on it, you will receive a rat stallion harness in your bags, which after usage, will give you rat stallion. Congratulations! But you can only use it in the underbelly. You do need the 20,000 eyes, not just 950. Don't get fooled by the bucks that you got. The rat stallion harness will disappear from your bags if you logged out for more than 15 minutes. And 25 players can actually use this box, so sometimes you'll just go there and find a random box, which means another player purchased it earlier, and yeah, so just, just click on it. Another good way to spend the currency is by buying the Wild Mana Wand from Dazic Proudmoor for 175 eyes, which empowers the mini bosses and doubles the amount of eyes they drop, so make sure to always keep these in your bags. They make a huge difference. The way it works is by using it on the mini boss before you attack, and then you kill and loot. Other than that, there's many other things you can buy from different vendors in the underbelly such as the Imp Binding Contract from Matthew Rabus, which after using, will spawn imps around the sewers that drop some eyes after killing and looting them. Some vendors sell profession patterns, there's a pet, at this point it's really up to you to just look around, check the vendors and spend your sightless eyes. There's also this quest that pops up every now and then, over here, from Fizzy Liver Zapper, that transforms you into some creature and it also gives you some sightless eyes as a reward, so keep checking your minimap whenever you're nearby. This is a pretty fast grind compared to some other ones in the game, and it should only take you a few hours. I personally took my time with it and had it done in like a week, but I never stayed there for more than 15 minutes a day, so it is a pretty fast grind. After the achievement is completed, you will receive your rat stallion in the mailbox. Congratulations! Next up, we have the Riddler's Mindworm. This one is a secret mound that was added in Legion. 
To get it, you have to visit 8 specific places all around Azeroth, where you will find 8 pages that you will need to interact with. Remember though, you will need to do this in order for it to work, so just follow me. Just a small piece of advice, it's really advantageous to do this with a mage since, you know, mages have teleports and you will basically need to go back to the capital, you know, to take the portals to all the different places. You could of course just fly around, but if you want to do it as fast as possible, then I advise you to use your mage if you have one. This shouldn't really take more than an hour at most, especially if you have a mage. Throughout the videos, you'll be able to see my timer, just to take a glimpse on how long it takes with a mage. So the first page that you need is in Legion's Dalaran. As shown on the map, head to the Ledger Domain Lounge in, and find the one bookshelf that is in the corner. There, you'll find page 9. Click it. Next up, head to Duskwood. If you're Horde, take a Zeppelin ride from Orgrimmar to Stranglethorn Vale and then fly. Once you're there, you'll find page 78 next to the Moonwell. After that, we're looking for page 161, which is found inside of the Firelands Raid in Mount Hyjal, which you can take a portal to from your main capital. The page is found next to the last boss, Ragnaros, and normally you have to kill all of the other bosses in order to get there, but there's actually an easy skip. When you're in, Head straight to the boss, Elisrezer, which by the way has a small chance to drop a mount in case you didn't know. When you get there, kill everything around, attack the boss, and wait for phase 2. After the transformation occurs, don't finish the fight right away, just don't attack. Instead, you should wait for the boss to drop feathers. After you pick 3 of them, you will be able to fly around for 30 seconds and head straight to Ragnaros. Here's 1, 2, and 3. Kill the boss, loot, hopefully you get the mount, and then quickly head towards the last boss. This way you would have skipped all of the other bosses. Go to Ragnaros, he also drops a mount just in case you didn't know, hope you get it. But you don't really need to kill him if you don't want to, you can just read the page and leave. Head over to the last brazier on the left side, there you'll find page 161. Next up, head to Aldum, which also has a portal in your capital city. If you're phased in BFA, make sure to speak to Zidormi to go back to the Cataclysm version. Go to this location, and you will find the page 655 between these two small trees, The next page, 845, is found inside the Siege of Orgrimmar raid, in the Vale of Eternal Blossom, located here. If you're not a mage, you can take a portal from your main capital city to the Jade Forest and just fly here. Enter the raid, and kill the first boss. If you've never done this fight before, this boss will go into a few phases, so just give it a minute or two and he'll be dead. Then go up the stairs and proceed to the next one, the trio. After defeating them, go to the Blossom Mine, as shown on the map, find your way through it, and you'll reach the third boss. Wait for the roleplay, speak with Norushan to activate the fight, kill the boss, and then go to the fourth one. You don't really need to kill him, it really comes back to you, but what you really need to do is go to the back of the room, on the left side, you'll find page 845 on the ground. Click it. Next one's page 1127, and it's found inside the Well of Eternity dungeon. To go there, you can take a portal to the Cavern of Times, found in both Stormwind and Orgrimmar, or just fly to Tenerys. Once you're inside, follow the path to the dungeons, and enter the Well of Eternity. You have to speak to Illidan once you're in, otherwise you'll keep dying and you won't be able to progress through the dungeon. After you speak with him, just follow him around, Kill the mobs he points to, 
smash the crystals and then you'll reach the first boss. After killing him, go up the stairs, take your left and you'll reach Queen Ashara. To defeat her, you have to kill the six fellas right here. And after that is done, wait for the bronze drakes to come over to you. Pick one and wait for the roleplay to end. After the drake drops you off, head to that first pillar and you'll find the page on the first step of the stairs. Next up, located next to the Shadow Pan Monastery in Kunlai Summit in Pandaria, you'll find page 2351 under one of the two tiger statues. The last page that you need is in Aldum again, but this time next to the Halls of Origination. There are these four statues, you want to go to the one next to the stairs on the left side. The page 5555 is right beneath it. After you've found all the 8 pages, head over to Westfall to collect your mount. Go to the location as shown on the map and there you will find a chest. Loot it and the Riddler's Mindworm is yours. Just a fast reminder, as fast as getting these mounts. If you find this video helpful, please consider subscribing for similar content in the future. For the next 3 mounts, we're heading over to Ardenweald in Shadowlands. If you've never played that expansion, you have to complete the storylines of two zones, which are Bastion and Maldraxxus, before you get to unlock Ardenweald. Starting with the Wild Seed Cradle. You need to collect 5 items and combine them together. You can get them in no particular order. The Diary of the Night can be found here, on the platform, on this small desk. Again, all coordinations are in the description of the video. Gardener's Basket, found here, next to the small cute pond. Gardener's Flute, found right next to these two wild seeds. Gardener's Hammer, found inside this broken cart. And lastly, Gardener's Wand, found under this cart. After you've collected all five of them, combine them by clicking on any of them. Then head over to Tirnaval. There, you'll find Twinkle Star. Speak with her and tell her that you found her stuff. And the chest will appear right behind her. Loot it, and the cradle is yours. The next mount is the Shimmer Mist Runner. This mount only requires a couple minutes. First, head over to Tirna Scythe area. You need to follow the path as shown so that you can kill the bad guy and receive the mount. As you can see, if you take another road, the NPC will disappear and you won't get anything. So just follow my lead. You can also fly, of course, but make sure you go through the gates. And now that you followed the right path, you can see the mob. Kill it, and after that, click on the mount, and it's yours. Next up, we have the Arboreal Gulper. In order to get this one, you first have to farm and loot an item that's called the Unusually Large Mushroom, which can drop from any creature in Ardenweald, but as Wowhead suggests, Possessed Tenders and Possessed Keepers have the best drop rate. You can find them around this area. I tried it there and it took me about 10 minutes, as you can see on my timer. So yeah, it shouldn't take you a lot of time. 
After you loot the mushroom, head to this location, and there you'll find a damp loam. Click it, and wait for the rare to spawn. Kill it, and loot the mount. The next mount is relatively new. It's from Dragonflight and it is so easy and so fast to get now that the currency required to buy it drops like flies. It's the Stormhide Salamanther. It's an awesome looking model. You can buy it from a vendor called Mithressa for 2000 elemental overflow. You can find her either on the Forbidden Reach at this location or in Valdraken right here. To get the currency, hop on your dragon riding mount and head towards the Forbidden Reach, found to the northeast side of the Waking Shores. When you get there, you will most likely find rares up on the map marked by a circle with a yellow star inside of it. You cannot really solo them as of the making of this video, so just try finding and joining a pre-made group. People are still farming them to this day. They do drop quite a lot of the overflows, so you'll only need a few rares to kill. Alternatively, you could do some quests or open treasures that also give good amounts of the currency. Just a side note that I'm not too sure about, but you might have to finish the main Dragonflight storyline once on your account in order to let this currency drop for you. Congratulations on your awesome looking Salamanther. This next mount can be a bit hard to solo, but you could get it in just a few minutes. The thing is, you might need a healer with you, it really depends on your class. The mount is Magma Shell. It's a very cool looking lava snail, and the first thing you need to do is you need an item. The empty magma shell. It drops from lava slurpers found around these lava pools in the waking shores next to the obsidian citadel around this zone to be exact. It doesn't have the best drop rate chance as well had chose it to be around 2% so you could either take your time farming it or just buy it off the auction house which is currently pretty cheap as you can see. When you get the item you want to head to this location to the lava pool on top. Stand on this rock and hover your mouse in the pool until you see where the empowered snail is. Click it so that you can see it, and either let your healer heal you, or if you're alone, pop all possible defensives that you might have. It's pretty doable with evokers, and remember, it does have quite a long cast time. After it's done, you'll have the magma shell mount in your bags. Next up, we have the Chauffeured Mechgineer's Chopper. What's cool and unique about this mount is that it's the only one that you can use starting from level 1, since you're not really the one driving it, even though you are. It is a reward from the achievement Heirloom Hoarder, which requires you to collect 35 heirloom pieces. It sure will cost you some gold, but I think it's one of the things that are really worth getting, as it not only gives you the mount, but also the heirloom pieces that are kinda helpful for leveling. If you're Alliance, you want to head to Ironforge to the Hall of Explorers and speak with Chrome Stoutarm. And if you're Horde, you can find the vendor Estelle Gendry in Orgrimmar on top of the main gate, or in the Undercity, inside of the Rogue's Quarter. Go ahead and pick the cheapest ones, which are 25 of the 500 gold, 9 of the 650 gold, and you'll need one more for 700 gold which totals 19,050 gold. It's a pretty nice, fast and useful mount to get, but yeah, it will cost you a bit in order to acquire it. The last two mounts aren't a guaranteed drop, but they do have a pretty acceptable drop chance, and I'm gonna help you farm them efficiently. Mount number 9 is the Smoldering Ember Worm, one of my favorite looking mounts in the entire game. It was added in Legion and it's part of the Return to Karazhan dungeon. It only drops on Mythic mode and has a 100% chance to drop for one player if you're in a party of 5. So in case you want to farm it by yourself, you'll only have a 20% chance to get it. The drop rate increases the more players there are, 
Still, 20% chance is pretty good for usual mount drops and it shouldn't take you that long to get it. I remember I got it on my third try, I guess. It was the third or even the second, something like this. The mount drops from Nightbane, but in order to summon him, you have to find five crystals in the dungeon. You have to remember that channeling a crystal gives you a buff, and the main goal is to stack the buff five times in order to be able to summon Nightbane. Now, the crystals disappear after clicking on them, and so if you're in a party with someone, only one is gonna have to click on the crystals, because if both of you are clicking, then you will be sharing the buff, and that way it won't stack to 5, and so the boss will not gonna be able to spawn. So don't forget to set the dungeon difficulty to mythic mode, and enter the dungeon. Open the door, and take your right. Go up the stairs, cross the hall, and take your right again. Here, go down the ramp, and then take your left. Go to the end of this hall, through this door, down the pathway, and here, interact with the NPC, and wait for the roleplay to end. You see the crystal over there? This is the first one we're gonna get after this boss dies. When the roleplay ends, kill the boss, then go to your right. Take your left, take your left again, and then another left, go down the path, walk through this room, go up the ramp, and on your right side is the crystal that we saw earlier. Click on it, and wait for the cast to finish. You can see you got your first stack of the buff, Medivh's Echo. Keep moving forward, and then enter through the first door to the left, then right, and right before the three arches, take your left. The second crystal is at the back of this room. Now you have two stacks. Go back the same way you came in, and when you get out of the hall, keep going straight to the fence and jump down. Kill the boss to your right, and take the third crystal behind the table. Now you have three stacks. Don't forget to pick up the rusty keys, as I believe you won't be able to reach the boss. I'm not really sure, but just to be safe, pick them up. Then you want to move forward, cross between these pillars, take your right, and go down the stairs. Here we have the stables. If you go in, you will find a boss at the center that drops midnight. A very cool looking mount, but with a pretty low drop chance, so you can try your luck. For the fourth crystal though, you want to take your left. Cross this open door, then left, keep going almost straight, cross the first tiny opening, and then the second tiny opening, and then take your right, and go to the end of the room, grab the fourth crystal, and now you have four stacks. Use the portal. Now you want to head down and go up the ramp. At this point it's just one way so just follow me. Keep going up. Go up the stairs, kill this guy, go in and kill the boss. The fifth crystal drops when the boss dies. Take it. Now that you stack the buff five times, it'll transform into Medivh's presence, and you have five minutes to get to Nightbane. You have all the time in the world, so don't worry. Go back all the way down, the same way you went up. And right below the start of the ramp, the door is now open. Go through it, 
and there you'll find the image of Medivh. Speak with him and wait for the roleplay. Kill the boss and hopefully you get it from your first try. The last mount we're covering in this video is none other than the Fallen Charger. I know, I know. It's not the fastest mount to get, it might even take you quite some time, but there's a simple and easy way that worked for me, and so now I want to help you get the horse of your dreams. This NPC could typically take hours upon hours to spawn. It does have a pretty acceptable drop chance though, estimated around 10%, which is pretty good for usual mount drops, but you don't want to go and camp him for 6 hours, right? The trick here that worked for me is to set your war mode on. At the beginning of my Fallen Charger farms, I used to camp this guy for hours and just give up and then go to sleep whenever my war mode used to be off. But one day I turned it on and I went to the maw and literally 20 minutes later, he was there. So this is how it goes. The rare, the Fallen Charger, has a few spawn points in the maw. He will most likely spawn in the Crucible of the Damned or in the Tremaculum. Sometimes he has a chance to spawn here at Perdition Hold, but I can't personally confirm that. Either way, he's gonna start running really fast, like if you're after him you most likely won't catch him, unless you have the Silver Shardhide Whistle toy from Corthia or something like this. So if somebody kills him, it could take up to 8 hours or even more for him to spawn back. But if he successfully reaches the end of his path, which is right before Corthia, he will instead despawn and spawn back in exactly 1 hour. And since very few people go to the maw with war mode on, especially early in the morning, he's mostly gonna keep spawning, despawning, and then spawning back one hour later, stuck in a never ending life and death cycle, until you kill him. So if you go there with war mode on, much better early morning, chances are you will find him in less than one hour. What you should do is wait at this spot because it's exactly between both paths that he could take. If you find other people to camp with you, you can split up and wait all around the possible spawn points. That way you would be 100% sure that one of you catches him. If you see a zone wide announcement in the chat that says an ear splitting whinny echoes across the mall as the fallen charger begins its ride, prepare yourself because the bad boy just spawned. And in case you see the other message that says the Fallen Charger releases a final mournful whinny as it fades away in less than 5 minutes, it means that someone killed him. But this never happened with me as long as my war mode was on. If it takes more than 5 minutes for the second message to appear, then he most likely got to Corthia, despawned and will respawn again in 1 hour. And again, if you're in a party, distributed, you would have a much higher chance to catch him. By the way, as of the recording of this video, literally today, the 2nd of July 2023, I went to the maw cause I had one less achievement for the Venthyr assault and as soon as I got there, he spawned right next to me in the Tremaculum. My war mode was on and it was 7.30 in the morning. 5 minutes later, I get the message that he's gone, which means he got to Corthia and despawned. So, while waiting, keep an eye on your minimap as it will show you whenever he gets close. You might also consider downloading the add-on Rare Scanner, it'll give you an alert whenever a rare mob is nearby. When you see him, try to catch him, use whatever movement buffs that you got. I could've used my whistle toy but it was on cooldown. In case you had to wait more than one hour, just don't waste more time and come back later. And good luck! I got mine on my ninth attempt. If you made it to this point, I would like to thank you for sticking around, and I really hope you found this video helpful. You can find all my socials in the description, I'm streaming on Twitch every day, sometimes retail, sometimes hardcore, I'm still a newbie in hardcore, and I would love to see you there and chat with you, and good luck with your mount farms.